Hi there. Welcome to the Agency Toolkit Podcast, a podcast where we discuss stories, strategies, and techniques to help you build a successful and profitable digital marketing agency. Our episodes contain inspiring conversations with CEOs and entrepreneurs and leave you with actionable tips, ideas, and strategies you can implement into your business today. We are happy to have you with us. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back, and get inspired. Hello, and thank you for tuning into another episode of the Agency Toolkit. I am your host, Julia McLaughlin. This episode is sponsored by Review Robin, a review management software for marketing agencies to help you guys get your clients more positive reviews. You can check that out at getreviewrobin.com. Now, my guest today is Lindsay Hitner, who is the founder of the It Crowd. The agency started small, but has exploded as the word has gotten out on how different their approach is on marketing. Lindsay has been positioned as a national marketing expert and regularly gives speeches as well as radio and TV interviews based around marketing. She also gives seminars in coordination with micro loan programs around the world to teach and promote business ownership to climb out of poverty. Today, we're going to be discussing Lindsay's journey of building her agency and what she's learned along the way. So thank you so much for joining us today, Lindsay. I love it. I'm so excited. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So let's get started. So I have a couple questions for you so that our listeners can get to know you a little bit. So what motivates or inspires you as an entrepreneur? Oh, for me, honestly, I think it was just a bug that I got when I was quite young. Um, I always kind of had my own drum that I was beating to. And when I was little, I just started businesses. It was, it was one of those of, I got out of school and I was either going to be broke working for somebody or I was going to be broke working for somebody or for myself. And I choose to do it by myself. And I, I don't know anything different. So, you know, it wasn't really one of those that I had a corporate job and then always had this dream to do something and finally took the leap. I've just always done this. So I don't really know anything different. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your journey, you know, uh, you know, how you started your first business and then, you know, that path that led you to then start the it crowd. Sure. So I was, I was pretty young. I was at that age where you can't go legally get a job. So I think that's 16 or something here in Texas. And, uh, but you can't babysit, right. Or you can pet sit, or you can do things that are around your neighborhood and you can mow lawns or whatever that looks like. And so my parents said that it was time to do something like that. And all my friends were doing babysitting because that was the natural thing that they were doing. And I wasn't really into the screaming child thing. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And so I decided that I should do pet sitting. And so I started and, you know, you start small because this is how far you can walk or ride your bike. And I started picking up some clients, which was good. And, and then that continued to expand and, then you get a car and then your radius goes a little bit farther at that point. And, and then you have friends that come to you and go, Hey, what are you doing? I don't want to babysit either. Can I do something with you? And you go, okay. So now I've got employees and I don't even know what this is, what is happening here. And you're 16 at this point. Right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm pretty young. And, uh, by the time I, I sold the pet sitting company, we had about 1200 clients. That's incredible. Um, Yeah, it was awesome. So like I said, just kind of fell into entrepreneurship. um, And it was something that I, I seemed to do pretty well with. Um, From that, there were other businesses in between. Uh, So one was a snow cone stand. Uh, I thought that the profit margins on that was phenomenal. And I don't like snow cones. So it was not one of those that I was going to eat the product. Um, (laughs) So that worked out really well. Yeah. Uh, at one point I had, uh, and I don't, I don't know if you guys have these in Canada, but red box machines, do you have those? No, we don't. Okay. So they are like vending machines for, uh, DVDs or videos. Oh, okay. uh, so this was before like Netflix took over everything, but you yeah. could go to a store and you could put in your credit card and you could get a 
DVD. It kind of, it's a vending machine. Yeah. And so you can't buy red box machines, but you can buy kind of knockoffs of those. And so I found that people that were living in apartments, that would be a really cool amenity if it was a very large apartment for them to have in their, in, in their kind of common area. Mm -hmm. And the apartments loved me because it was now a perk that their residents could have. So that was a free thing that they allowed me to have that space. And then residents were there and they didn't have to leave. And so it, it turned out really well. So, you know, those kind of grew. And after that, I, did you guys have Groupon? Yes, we do. Oh, okay, good. All right. So then the next project was, I loved Groupon. I love living social when they first started. I thought it was kind of, the, I thought it was just the coolest concept. Yeah. And I wanted to create it and I had no idea how to do anything online. I had no idea how to code. I, I didn't know email campaign. I didn't know any of these things, but I had done my marketing for my businesses before. And yep. So I, I learned how to do all of that and mm -hmm. ended up creating a deal a day website for this Dallas Fort Worth area. So um, cool. So, yeah, it was awesome. I, I really loved this, this part of my life. Um, I got to work B2B with, you know, companies that were coming in and, and doing deals with us. And then I got to work B2C because these are the people that ultimately were buying from me. Yeah. Uh, so I learned a lot about uh, online. I learned a lot about branding. I learned a lot about B2B and B2C and all of the things. Um, so I had a broker out of New York. They called me and said, can we buy you? I said, yes, of Amazing. course. Thing. Yes. So cool. Yeah. Um, so that one was sold. And then I had a girlfriend that came to me and said, Lindsay, do you want to buy a clothing store? And I said, no. Mm -mm. No, nope, absolutely <laughs> not. And she goes, Hey, like I'll do the clothes stuff and, and you just do the business stuff. And I was like, okay. So I got roped into this, uh, by the end of it, I was the only one that was uh, the owner of this company. And at that point I was looking for a marketing agency. So I, I had a store in Dallas. I had another one that was in Fort Worth. Um, I had an online presence. This was before stores really kind of had, or these boutiques had online presences. And so mm -hmm. I was competing with some pretty big boys out there and, and, and doing okay. And, um, but at this point I was, I was looking for an agency and I, I went out to try to find or something to help me with my marketing and I went out to find it and I couldn't find what I was looking for. So November 2014, I created it. So cool. That's amazing. So yeah, tell us more about the it crowd, you know, and what really differentiates you yourselves from other agencies out there. Sure. Um, my agency groups still look at me kind of like I have eight eyes. Um, <laughs> because I, I do think that we do things very differently. Um, we have what we call puzzle pieces and these puzzle pieces are our product offerings and so each puzzle piece that could be the social ones so that's going to be anything social media that's going to be reputation management that's going to be blogs we have a strategy side of things um, so that's the strategist we have the coder so anything that has to happen online so there are eight different puzzle pieces and what makes us different is not only are we a full service agency which is a little bit hard to come by at the this point we're a full service agency that we want you to lean on us as opposed to manage us um, and so we really want to be part of the team okay and we do that by companies taking these puzzle pieces and we can help them um, but taking each one of them and moving them around as they see fit so in month one the company might say Lindsay I need new branding and I need to set up my social media channels great so that's going to be the social puzzle piece and that's going to be the good looks. So we'd start with that. And the second mm -hmm. month is, hey, Lindsay, okay, the branding's done and now I really need a website. Okay, so let's move out that puzzle piece and we'll start with the website puzzle piece. And that website puzzle piece might take us a few months and that's okay. Um, but maybe we keep on with that two puzzle piece cadence. And each one of our puzzle pieces is the exact same price. So business owners, that's where things become different. Business owners know for their PL, 
this is how much I'm spending on marketing. And this is how much I'm spending on a monthly basis. And I have a company that I get to lean on that can do everything for us. And then I just get to determine how fast that is. So do I want two puzzle pieces? Do I want five puzzle pieces? Like how fast do I want that to go? And that will determine their price. Interesting. Okay. So, so they're not locked into a set price every single month, but you, so how does that work? Do you kind of guide them on, you know, we'll just focus on the website on this one puzzle piece this month and then social another month. How does that kind of work? Yeah, sure. So every quarter, our proven process, it's pretty simple. It's discover, plan, execute, repeat. So our team, um, their job is while you can always get a hold of us via text, phone, email, any of those things, uh, you'll have a weekly or a biweekly meeting with your teammates. But on a quarterly basis, that's where we really start doing our planning. So it's where do we want to go over this quarter? What do those puzzle pieces look like? Do we need two of them? Do we want four of them? How, how are we going to plan this out? And so we discover that, we plan it for the client, then we execute, and then we repeat that every quarter. Okay. So interesting. So, you know, when you were first starting out in those early days, what were some of the challenges that you had to overcome? Oh man, I, so when I first started the agency, it was just myself and, um, I had a few clients right away cause they knew me from where I live and they knew what I was capable of doing and just kind of networking with them. I had a few people that said, Hey, can you just do this for us? And my answer was no, I own clothing stores. Like I'm not in marketing. So yeah. when I was done with the clothing stores or when those were purchased, I had a few clients already. And anybody that is an entrepreneur that goes out on the, by themselves, the scariest thing is the first employee that you hire. Yeah. And I remember her name is Megan and I remember hiring her and why she decided to take the leap with me. I will never understand. <laughs> um, but she does. She has this great paying job and now she's coming over to we don't have anything. We work in Starbucks at this point. Yeah. Um, and just kind of this harebrained idea of we're going to do things different. And this is what this is going to look like. And she goes, okay. I go, Megan, I don't know how to pay you. And she's like, what? Like, well, we got a month to find some more clients in order for me to pay you. Um, and so we found them. It was kind of a make or break, but, uh, you know, we hit the pavement and found clients and, and that was, you know, in the first few months of the agency, but That's uh, amazing. yeah, so I needed help and it was just kind of one of those of, we got 30 day runway, so let's figure it out. So, you know, those are, no matter if you're an agency owner, no matter what business you're in, the, the first employee, the first person that comes and is on your team is is terrifying. You are now responsible yeah. for somebody else's livelihood. And that's really scary. Yeah. So how did you find those first few clients so that you could ensure that you were able to pay for Megan's livelihood? Yeah. <laughs> um, so it really, we went, I, I'll never forget this. We're, we're sitting in Starbucks and, um, I have to tell you, I think that was, at some point I need to write a book about how my company started at Starbucks and Starbucks got me to my first million and uh, it truly started right there. Like I, there, I don't know if anybody knows this, but there are Starbucks groups out there. So oh, it interesting. is, this, yeah. So if you, if you aren't a Starbucks connoisseur, like I am, mm -hmm. if you go in, there are always a group of people or maybe two or three groups of people and they come every single day at the same time all the time. Okay. So I started seeing this and somehow I like started getting myself into these groups and I had no idea who these people were. Um, but I am at Starbucks at 10 AM or 11 AM with these other people. And they're like, what do you do? And so you start having these conversations and I'm not kidding you. My entire network was built from Starbucks. That's um, so interesting. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, we, I had a group and they're like, Hey, I know so-and-so and I know so-and-so. And granted, if you're at Starbucks sitting at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock in the afternoon, you're either retired, you're a business owner, possibly you 
work from home possibly? I mean, there's kind of this interesting dynamic of people that are there at that time. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so things started to grow quite rapidly because of Starbucks and their groups yeah. that I got myself into somehow. And so then, you know, we did other things like networking events that were around Dallas and whatnot. But I mean, truly, like Starbucks is where it started. Yeah, no, it makes so much sense. You know, pretty much everyone I know drinks coffee and Starbucks is such a popular place. So yeah, it just makes sense, you know, just being your own biggest advocate, always talking about, you know, what you do, listening, being genuinely interested in what other people are up to. It actually, it's a really interesting strategy. I've never heard anyone else really talk about the the coffee shop marketing, but it's, and networking, but it's, it's so smart. Yeah. I mean, it, and then it's, I have to tell you, and don't tell anybody this. But (laughs) I know we're on a podcast, but um, once you're in one Starbucks group, then they like cheat on each other with other Starbucks groups. So then like there's one Starbucks group like person, then they go rogue. And so then they go to a different Starbucks and they're like, hey, come to this one too. So then you start like really getting all over the city with different Starbucks groups that meet at different times and they're completely unplanned. And they're usually just a group of friends. They get together or that they've met or whatever it looks like. I even have a hat from one of the Starbucks groups. Like they made it a thing and I am part of it and they inducted me into it with a hat. That is so interesting. I had no, I had no idea that this was even a thing. So yes, it's, it's really interesting. (laughs) They were intense. Um, so if you had one growth tip that you could share with any up and coming agency owners, what would that be? I would say to do it steady, um, like slow and steady wins the race. In my opinion, uh, you know, when I first started the agency, it was, I mean, we would double and triple our numbers every single year. And to be completely honest with you, that gets so exhausting. Um, because if you're an agency owner, it's really the chicken before the egg or the egg before the chicken. Do you hire people before you have clients? Do you have clients before you hire people? Yes. And when you have this um, constant client base that keeps coming in and wanting more and more and, and you're doing this, it, systems just get broken. Um, and so you find yourself at a certain point. And I found that kind of around like the million dollar mark. I found that at that point, um, you kind of hit a ceiling and you have to step back because you grew so fast. You have to step back and go, okay, what are my processes and how am I going to actually do this? Because at that point you might have 10 people working for you. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're these, they're all doing things a different way. And so in order to be able to scale it, you have to have your processes in place. So start off with your processes, 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 processes for everything Mm -hmm. and slow and steady, in my opinion. Do you have any tips for dialing in your processes to ensure that everyone on your team is on the same page? Yes. Can I do a product endorsement, I guess? Sure. Go right ahead. So I, this was a referral from another agency owner. It's a group called ClickUp. Um, It's a project management software. And we found this and we actually hired another group uh, to do our, to help set it up. And one of the cool So they helped implement it within your agency? They did. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And they were phenomenal at it. And they only work with agency owners. Um, and so they helped us implement it. But one of the things with ClickUp is they have templates. So you, and I'm sure that other project management softwares now do this. I couldn't find one at the time when I moved over to ClickUp, but mm-hmm. it honestly is absolutely everything that happens. So my teammates can go in and they can go, okay, I want to build a new website. And so they go into the template center. They say, click on the template and absolutely everything is laid out for them. So it's here's step one. Here's who does step one. Here's how long it should take. Here's some resources that will help you with it. Okay. Now you click off of step one. Here's step two. Here, here's the person that's responsible. Here's how much time it will take. This is when it needs to be done by. Um, and it's, I mean, step by step by step by step. And 
it really helps to make sure that you have that Disney World experience or you have that McDonald's experience um, yeah. across the board with no matter who it is that they're talking to or a client is talking to within your organization, they're getting the same experience because they're all working off the exact same templates. Um, Interesting. And that took us forever, forever to do. Um, <laughs> But truly from business development all the way to end process, like end product, it has been the best thing that we could have ever done. Was that Zen Pilot who helped you to get that set up? So it was Zen Pilot, yes. Zen Pilot. Yeah, I just actually had Gray McKenzie, who, who is one of the co-founders on the podcast yep. last week. Yep. So Gray is phenomenal. Their entire team is phenomenal. And yeah. I don't pay you to say that, but um, they are worth every single penny that you pay and you will pay to work with them. Uh, but it is transformational. That's amazing. Very good. That's, that's great to have, hear that you had such a great experience. Yeah. Awesome. So I would love to talk about sales with you a little bit. Sure. So what are your tips for bringing in more leads into your agency and then closing those prospects? Go to Starbucks. No, just <laughs> um, you know, for me, I, um, I love talking to people. I love being out and about. And, um, one of the books that I read when I was first starting out, it's called the go giver. Have you heard of this? Book? Yes. It's such a good little book. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a super easy read. It, you know, I, I don't know, it would take you an hour out of the day to read the book. Yeah. Uh, it's a narrative. And so it's such an awesome lesson to learn. And so if you are the type of person that goes out and networks or talks to people, just the go-giver, the premise of it is to give before you receive. Yep. And to have, be that person that knows, oh, I've got a guy. Oh, I've got, oh, you need that? Okay, I've got somebody. Let me refer you to this person and let me make that introduction for you. And yeah. helping other businesses grow because of the network that you have in order to then be able to be top of mind for them and to give you business back. And yeah. it makes so much sense to me. And so I started doing that when the agency was very young and, uh, like I said, going to Starbucks or going to different networking events or um, our clients even, our awesome referral sources because of the fact that they find that we give before we expect anything back. And, mm -hmm. and, and I think that they can tell that. So I would say that when it comes to sales, get the book, The Go-Giver, and truly do that. Another thing that I absolutely love doing, and this is all kind of boots on the ground stuff. So it might work for some and other people are like, that's the most terrifying thing I could ever think about doing. And I will never do that. But for the few crazy ones that are, that do that. Um, yep. I love this. This is another, I, I swear I, I need to write something down about this, but I love going to bars. So I love posting up at a bar with my computer and working all day. And okay. Interesting. my computer said, I can't remember. It says something like working with a side of wine. And so it's a sticker <laughs> that's on my computer. And if you start going to the same places, people are like, what are you doing? Why are you at the bar with your computer? And you don't talk to anybody, but like, what are you doing? Yeah. And every single time somebody will ask. And again, if you're sitting there in happy hour and like you are at a spot where there are business owners that go, you will get business. I don't know how else that works. Like you just start talking to people. I love uh, it. It's so unique. It's yeah, so smart so though. I love it. And so I'm not even kidding you. When I built out our office space, I was like, I love sitting at bars. So I made this massive bar in our office space so I could have people over to be at the bar. No um, way. But yeah, so those are the boots on the ground things. I mean, get involved, get involved in um, any type of organization that you can get involved in, get involved with all of the different networking groups and, and make sure that you know the types of people that are going to these networking groups or else it's just kind of a waste of time if they don't align with what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be my boots on the ground strategy. Uh, 
You know, I think that a lot of agency owners and, and I just went to an agency summit a few weeks ago and, and their biggest thing is content is king. And yes, content is king. So yeah. I'm sure that you've had a lot of people on your podcast that that's probably what they talk about. And you should probably listen to those podcasts because I agree with the same things. But yeah. um, if you want boots on the ground, go to Starbucks, go to the bar and go to networking events. Yeah, that's so interesting. I love that. Very cool. <laughs> So I'd love to talk about how you maintain happy clients. Do you have any tips for, you know, creating really happy clients who are just going to refer you at the end of the day? Yeah. Um, I would say that there's probably two things. Uh, be a company that they can lean on instead of manage. And mm -hmm. we tell these, we tell our clients that all the time. I'm sure that you have had a new vendor or you, you've said, hey, I, I'm going to hire this new vendor and you're really excited because it's something that you need within your house or, you know, whatever it is. Um, and then they turn out to just ask you a million questions. And if you're not standing there next to them, like nothing gets done. Mm. And I find that that happens a lot with a lot of a lot of vendors, no matter what industry it is. And granted, yes, we need information from our clients. However, our job is to make it easier for them and not harder for them. Absolutely. So, um, be that company that they can lean on um, instead of being that company that is like, oh gosh, I have another email from this person and they're going to ask me for something and I don't have it and I don't have time for this. Like make it easy for them. Right. Um, and the second thing that I would say is do what you say that you're going to do when you say that you're going to do it. Yeah. Um, and if you can't, for whatever reason, like make sure that that's communicated the correct way. Mm -hmm. um, in our quarterly meetings where we do our discover, plan, execute, repeat, uh, we also talk about the wins of the last quarter and the things that didn't go well this last quarter and where we fell short and where the client fell short. Mm -hmm. um, and having that open communication and being okay, having kind of the, icky conversations if your client fell short or if you fell short uh, really helps with I think that bond it helps with hey like they really do have our best interests in hand and if something happens I know that I can trust them to come back to me with the wins as well as the downfalls and to fix it as fast as possible yeah. Are there anything that you noticed that, you know, you guys were maybe falling short in that you, that you ended up having to go back and course correct? Oh, yes, <laughs> of course. And if anybody tells you they don't, like they're lying to you. Yeah. Um, every quarter, I don't know. Uh, are you familiar with EOS or traction? Yes. Yes. We, we've implemented it with a review, Robin. All right. So uh, we started that about five years ago. Yeah. And uh, we self implemented. And actually, I am looking to uh, kind of go deeper with their organization right now, um, or, or, or an organization that's similar to it. But um, I think that that really helps. So every quarter, we get together and we say, as an organization, as our leadership team, and we say, okay, what's working? what's not working. And when you first start this meeting, it's one of the questions is what's not working in your organization. And yep. you talk through those issues. And I think we have issues every single quarter. We have issues every single week when we have our, our meetings together. So yes, there are tons of things that we have done wrong in the past or that haven't been done. They, that could be done better. Right. Um, so yes, is that the answer to your question? <laughs> yeah, no, I think That's it's I think lot. it's really important just yeah, putting that process in and yeah, using a system like EOS where you can be, you know, every quarter you're making sure that you are discussing those and it's not just falling through the cracks. Yeah. So yeah, I, I love that. So what has been the biggest overall challenge that you've had to overcome as you've been growing your agency? Hmm. The biggest problem or the biggest hurdle that I have had to overcome, this happened about four years ago. And one of the questions that you asked me before was um, some advice to new agency owners, and it was slow and steady. Mm -hmm. And 
I guess it was probably about four years ago, maybe a little bit longer than that. I mean, we were just going gangbusters. And I lost sight of who we were, and I lost sight of our culture, and I lost sight of why we were doing what we were supposed to, what we were doing. Why are we mm. in a marketing agency? And I would say that that was the biggest hurdle because that was a, as a business owner, my voice and who I was and the reason why I started the agency started to get drowned, drowned out. Yeah. And you could tell based on the product that we were delivering, you could tell based on the types of clients that we had, you could tell based on the teammates that we had that the core values that I have and that I expect for my agency or any company that I'm with that I have started weren't oh. being implemented. And that so was, was things were getting mis misaligned. Yeah. And that yeah. was a really humbling experience for me. Um, and really, truly like a house cleaning for our team. And mm -hmm. we kind of talked about EOS and, and part of implementing EOS is who are you? Why are you doing it? What's your vision? What's your mission? And, and actually not just saying that and, but living that. And yeah. so when we implemented, so I guess it was about five or six years ago that this happened, uh, that was the hardest thing is not knowing who we were, why we were doing it and, and effectively communicating that with the team over and over and over on a consistent basis, as well as new members mm. um, of our team. And that was probably the hardest thing, you know, customers always teammates, always what's happening with our economy always, you know, but, I would say that that was the hardest, the hardest thing for me to go through. How do you now instill your, your culture and your values into your team and your work yeah. now? I have the most awesome integrator. And if you know EOS, you will know what that means. Um, I really had to let go of the vine. I had to let go of things, but I had to be, I had to stay in my lane and my lane as a CEO and the visionary of this company is to be the culture maker. Um, and so I made the culture at that point, And then I have this unbelievable integrator that integrates that culture and she demands it. Um, so every single Monday morning, we all come in as a team. Uh, we do uh this thing called i'm in so it's it can be anything it uh on mondays it's what did you do over the weekend what are you looking forward to this week and then a question so it can be any question so what's your favorite color what's your favorite popsicle what's your favorite i don't know anything that you want and it can okay. be personal it can be fun it can be scary you know whatever it is and, and so we talk through that but on Mondays, we also go through every single Monday, our core values, our mission, our vision, our quarterly rocks, and we confess that as a team. Um, and when, when my integrator, her name is Micah, when she told me about this, I was like, you are crazy. Um, but it has been one of the coolest things ever. Uh, we say it, we say it out loud every single Monday, every um, week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So interesting. Cool. And how has your team received that since you guys implemented it? Yeah, it definitely keeps everything top of mind and yeah. it keeps the planning that you do at the end of the year or every quarter or whatever that looks like. It mm -hmm. keeps that top of mind. And I mean, if you have, if you've read anything like the power of the subconscious mind, or if you know anything about those just how the universe works. The more that you speak things, the more the existence comes into play. And yeah. so us actually speaking those, um, I truly believe has, has allowed the universe or allowed God or whomever you believe to, to give you those things. Yeah. Oh, I love that. So where do you see the it crowd in five years time? Sure. So EOS makes you do this. So <laughs> yep. 
<laughs> we definitely have that. Uh, we do have a dollar amount um, in place of, of where we would like to be and the growth of that. Uh, I think for me, one of the biggest things is, is and our tagline is we create everlasting thumbprints. And if you look at our logo, there's a C for the crowd and it's a thumbprint. Yeah. And the reason why I do what I do and our mission is do good things, make great people and pursue opportunities to love and serve others. And for me in five years, if we have that many more clients that have come through that we get to help make their everlasting thumbprints a reality, Mm -hmm. as well as other teammates that come through and, and learn. And, and maybe this is their last step on their um, journey when it comes to their career. Or this is their first step in their journey and it comes to their career. And this is a stepping stone for them to get somewhere else. To my thumbprint on the world will hopefully be, and hopefully it's good things, people will be able to say, Lindsay left an impression on us or the it crowd left an impression on us. And I truly think that we are in a spot that in the next five years, that could be really exciting. That's so exciting. I love that. We are getting ready to wrap up here shortly, but is there anything else that you would like to add before we move on to the fast five? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I don't know. I think my husband this weekend was asking me why, 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 why do you do what you do? And, and there's some psychology around five whys. I don't know it yet, but mm-hmm. I think knowing why you're doing it, and this comes from not even just agencies, but really as, as people, why are you doing what you're doing? And are you doing it because it's something that you believe in or because it's something that you just want to paycheck for? And if you want a paycheck just for it, that's okay. But just understand that that is what a means to an end your career is, but go and find your why somewhere else. Um, yeah. Go and find that extracurricular activity, go and, and, and volunteer, go and do something. But if you, if you're an agency owner, your why has to be people and it has to be loving on people or else you don't succeed. Mm-hmm. And so if you aren't a people person, if you don't love people, if you're just in it for a paycheck, go away from the agency world because it is one of the hardest businesses that I've ever been in um, and ever owned. And it's a roller coaster. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think that's great advice. You definitely have to find your why because it's just going to inspire you and fuel you and be that drive to, you know, do your best work at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. So let's move on to the fast five now. So I have five rapid fire questions for you. Oh, I can't remember. Okay. (laughs) So to start, what is a book you've read that's made an impact on you? The Go-Giver. Love it. And what does your morning routine look like? Um, I wake up, I drink water. I hear that that's supposed to be really good for you. So you drink water first. <laughs> Heard good things. Yeah. Um, I let the dogs out. I get ready. And then on my drive, so I have about a 45 minute drive. That's when I do my Bible study. So I do that. Um, I listen to the word and then I'm usually in the office earlier than everyone else. And so it's kind of my time to, okay, what am I doing for the day? Am I on track for what I've decided that I'm going to do for the week? Um, and, and get a head start on everyone else. Perfect. And is there a CEO that you follow or study? I follow and I study, we talked a little bit about this before we got on the podcast. Um, There are 13 CEOs that are in my peer group and I follow and I study them. They are absolutely unbelievable. They are other agency owners and I learned so much from them. So it's not a podcast. It's not a a book that I've read. It's not this figure that, you know, everyone kind of looks to. It's truly my peers. Um, Interesting. And there, there are 13 of them that, that I, I study. I study everything that they send. Yeah, so cool. And what is your favorite online tool? ClickUp. Good answer. And 
What's one thing you wish you had known when you began your career? When I began my career as an agency owner, I wish that I knew how hard it was. Um, yes. I yes. wish that I knew the roller coaster that it is. And it's, it's funny because I was, I was just in an agency conference in Chicago two weeks ago, and it was all agency owners so or, or C-level executives. Mm -hmm. and, and we're all tired. And, um, you know, especially with everything that has happened over the last few years in our economy and, and marketing is the first to come and usually the first to go mm -hmm. and just know that you're getting yourself into a roller coaster and there is no way out of the roller coaster. So be that person that enjoys that. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Lindsay. It was a pleasure to have you on the podcast and I really enjoyed chatting with you. Thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Agency Toolkit. We hope you've learned something new that you can implement into your agency today. If you liked this episode, please subscribe to our podcast and we'll see you next time.